The worst thing you can do in business is to spend time doing the wrong things and thus losing money. There's so many people that say consistency is key and I do too, but there's a caveat to that. Thing is that you need to be consistent with the right activities in order to see success because if you're consistent with the wrong things, you can be consistent for the next 10 years and still be a broke real estate agent. And that's not what I want to happen to you. So what I want to do is help you understand how to not only leverage social media as a real estate agent, agent, but most importantly, the mistakes that you need to avoid that so many agents fall victim to, which is why I constantly get messages from agents saying, Mike, you know, I'm putting out social media content. I've been doing it for months or years and I still don't have clients coming directly to me. So what I'm going to do is make sure that that does not happen to you. I've now helped over 5,000 agents scale their production by leveraging social media. So what I've done is I've taken note of all of the common trades of agents that are putting out social media content, spending time on it and not getting any results. And then in contrast, all of the successful habits of those who are putting out content and quickly getting clients and closed deals from their free social media posts. So without further ado, let's give a bit of a mashup here of some of my best strategies and tips of what you need to avoid if you want to see success by leveraging social media as a realtor. Let's break down the 11 things that most real estate agents are doing wrong when it comes to leveraging social media for realtors. Okay, so number one is the number one reason why agents fail with anything, which is not just social media, but lead generation or just the business in general, which is mindset. It is so important to go in with the right mindset when it comes to social media. Otherwise, you're destined to fail before you've even started. When it comes to mindset, there's certain principles that you need to be aware of that are going to make sure that you go in with the right approach in in order to eventually see success leveraging social media, which is hopefully clients coming directly to you on a consistent basis. Some of these principles include not comparing yourself to other people. Comparison is a death or thief of joy. And all too often on social media, you're comparing yourself to all the other agents that are posting on there. And genuinely, most of them are actually broke, not doing any deals. They just post great content, which makes it look like they're absolutely crushing it. But you want to make sure that on social media, you're not comparing yourself Additionally, not getting focused on the vanity metrics, your followers, your subscribers, your likes, all of that does not matter in the beginning. It honestly never really matters. And what I mean by that is I always see agents saying, well, I'm going to start putting out great content once I get a thousand followers or a thousand subscribers or whatever. But if you don't treat the 312 followers like they matter, you'll never get to a thousand. You have to understand that the followers are actually people. These are people that have raised their hand and say that, they want to follow you. They want to follow your journey. They want to be a part of it and they want to see more. So treat them that way because the only way you're ever going to be able to grow a large following is if you pour into the people with value that you already have, which is going to lead to them engaging more, sharing more, and thus bringing more people to your social media platforms. Lastly, when it comes to mindset, you really need to make sure to embrace delayed gratification. A lot of times people are looking for immediate success. They're looking for the perfect post that's going to get clients. But ultimately, the consistent execution for a long period of time is what's going to allow you to see the fruit of your labor. It's kind of like that meme that you're probably familiar with, which is the person digging for a diamond and one turns away right before they hit the diamond and the other continues to push through and ends up hitting the diamond and getting what they were hoping for. The same thing comes with social media. If you can extend the time horizon for which you're expecting results for long enough, you will see success. Let me explain. If you're going in with the mentality of I'm going to post consistently on YouTube every single month for three months, and if I don't get a client, it's not for me. This is what happens all the time. Well, that's because you've set your frame of reference so short, so associated with immediate gratification that, of course, if you don't hit it in three months, you're going to be disappointed. But what happens if you extended your expectations to a year? Well, now, if you're thinking, I'm going to do this for one year, if you don't hit that milestone, if you don't get that client by the third month, you're not going to be disappointed because you said you were going to do it for a year. If you extend it for 10 years, like I did when I got started, I said, I'm going to do this forever because I understand the importance of it. I've never been disappointed about not getting certain tangible results or clients coming to me from my content after a certain period of time, because my time horizon is so far that if I don't get somebody in three months, then 
who cares? I've got 10 years to go. So it's really important to first go in with the right mindset because that is going to be the foundation for everything. Number two is not making it a priority. Your schedule will show you your priorities. And every time I see somebody that's struggling with social media, I will ask them to pull up their calendar and say, show me where you've got time blocked off every single week for creating content or planning for content or recording or editing or whatever. And every single time I see somebody struggling with it, they cannot show it to me. Right now, it's a Saturday. I batch my YouTube videos every Saturday. It does not matter, I'm not meeting with anybody. It doesn't matter if my friends invite me out. Saturday is my recording time. And that's how I've been able to be consistent because to me, it's a priority. And if you're negotiating with yourself, because again, everything is a choice and you choose whether to do it or whether not to do it. And all too often people are treating social media as a negotiable where either A, they don't block it off and they do it when they feel like it, which by the way, you never feel like it, or they block it off and then they negotiate it. They block it off and then suddenly a lender calls them or a title rep calls them or a friend calls them and they're like, yeah, you know what? I don't really want to do social media content right now because recording sucks. So I'm gonna go out and do something fun. And that consistently compounds to make sure that you never see success with social media. You have to understand that social media is the modern way of prospecting, consumer behavior is changing, and social media is where people are finding real estate agents. So you need to treat it with the discipline and consistency and making it a priority the same way you should with prospecting or any other form of lead generation. Number three is not following a blueprint. If you want my social media blueprint that is proven to help agents close five plus deals per month every Every single month consistently with clients coming directly to them and has helped brand new agents do six to seven figures in GCI in their first year with clients coming directly to them, drop a comment below and just say free training and I'll give it to you. But it's really important to follow a proven blueprint so that you're on the path to success that is proven. Every time I've seen somebody succeed, they are following a blueprint, whether it be cold calling, the ones that win are the ones that are following scripts that have worked for other people. When it comes to door knocking, they are following scripts that have worked for other people. When it comes to social media, you need to follow a proven blueprint that has worked for other people. There's no point in reinventing the wheel because everything that could be done has already been done and people have already proven what works across all different market centers and all different personality types. So instead of wasting a ton of time trying to figure out what works or reinventing the wheel, doing something in innovative, just understand that number one, you never will. And number two, it's not even worth the time because you could just go on the proven path to success from day one. And if you consistently follow it, you will see results. Number four comes down to inconsistent branding. This is important because clients are going to vet and audit you across multiple different channels. So I see this with a lot of the agents in my organization at eXp that are crushing it on social media, getting my help personally. And if you want to know about getting my help directly one-on-one, just look at the link in the description and you can book a call with me about that. But when we look at some of the examples, we've got a lot of agents that are crushing it on TikTok and people are finding these agents on TikTok, but then validating them on YouTube or finding them on Instagram and validating them on TikTok or Facebook. It's really important that your branding is consistent across all social media platforms and that you don't have this incredible content on one and then you're ignoring all the others or your branding looks terrible on all the others because people will go find you and your social media presence is an extension of your brand and your brand is an extension of your quality of work. So you want to make sure that no matter where people find you, they're going to see the same level of quality and that quality is going to be in complete alignment with the quality of work that you would do when working with them. Number six is going to be inauthentic content. Now, yes, I always talk about R&D or rip off and duplicate, but there is a caveat to that. Yes, you wanna find people that you like, you admire, that are role models to you, you really resonate with their content, and you wanna use that as a bit of a go-by or a blueprint so that you can use it as a reference point for creating your own content. However, you want to put your own spin on it. Where a lot of people go wrong and why they struggle to be consistent is because they're not enjoying the process because of the fact that they're trying to be somebody else instead of being themselves. Nobody can be a better version of you than you because you're one of like 8 billion. There's only one you and that is your superpower. So your authenticity, your transparency, and how genuine you come across is going to be what allows people to connect you with. But all too often people are trying to be somebody else 
And if you come across one way on social media and then in person, you're a little bit different, that discrepancy is gonna push a lot of people away. So it's important to, yes, use other people as a bit of a reference and use it as inspiration, but you have to make sure that you rip off, duplicate, and make it better with your own spin on it. Number seven is one near and dear to my heart that has made the biggest difference, which is being unbiased. This one key concept can completely change the course of your career forever, and honestly is what allowed me to 10X my lead generation conversion just by applying this one simple principle, which is the concept of being unbiased. So many people are biased when it comes to their social media content, where they think just because they have put something out that other people should just naturally engage with it. Let me give you an example of this. Let's say I'm going to post some sort of short form video on, you know, maybe TikTok or Instagram reels, for example. Well, what too many people do is they just post it and make that assumption that everybody should be engaging with them. What I want you to start doing is before you click post, you want to make sure to audit it and say, if I wasn't me, if I didn't know who I was, I didn't know what I've achieved, what I've done, who I am, I've never come across me at all. If this post landed in front of me, would I like it? Would I go so far as to comment on it? Would I share it with anybody or save it? And would I even go to your profile and subscribe to you or follow you? And what you'll see oftentimes is you wouldn't even engage with your own content. So just because you were putting it out, you can't make the assumption that everybody should just engage with it. If you wouldn't engage with your own content, how can you expect other people to do that as well? So when you can get to the point where you would say, hey, this video is entertaining enough or valuable enough or educational enough, I would like that. I would share it on my story. I'd share it with a friend. I'd save it. I'd even follow because I want to see more. That's when you're going to start increasing your following because what you need to understand is to grow your following on social media, that by definition is growing by people who do not know you. So your posts have to land in front of people that don't know you in any way, shape or form and make the decision to follow you. Well, the only way that they will ever do that is if it's good enough to actually excite that engagement, not just because they know who you are, they know how valuable you are, and they've made all these assumptions. No assumptions can be made because they don't know who the heck you are, and that's why it's really important to audit every single piece of content that you put out there and use that litmus test to say, would I even engage with it? That perfectly segues into number eight, which is ignoring engagement. It is so important to engage with other people because if you're not engaging back with them, them, they're not going to continue to engage. And this is not just engaging with the people that are engaging on your posts and replying to comments and things like that, but engaging with other people. Look at hashtags, for example, related to your city and your market and go engage with a few other people and start to get them to understand who you are. It's really important that you are engaging and leveraging these platforms to build connections because ultimately that's the beauty of social media is it allows you to create conversations at scale and it allows you to create engagement with people in your local market center that otherwise would not have heard about you. So look up hashtags related to communities that you want to farm or to your city in general, and just take a bit of time every day to drop some sort of positive comment on a bunch of people's posts, but make sure that it's an authentic form of engagement. Make sure you're not just putting emojis, but actually write something that makes sense based on the post. But engagement is going to be really important because that's going to stir up conversations. It's going to keep you top of mind and it's going to show that you're actually listening to your audience for those who are engaging with you. And also it's going to make sure that people in your local market start to find out about you because if somebody I don't know drops a comment on one of my posts, I will go look and see who they are. And if they see that you're a realtor, well, now they know that there's somebody they can work with. Number nine is poor quality. This is so, so important when it comes to social media, poor quality of value, poor quality quality of image. And that's what I want to get a point across is that it's not just the quality of the content in terms of, you know, the high quality video professional equipment. It's the quality of the value. You can't turn your Instagram profile into a homes and land magazine with a bunch of silly Canva templates just to post, just to say that you're consistent. If people can't engage with you, they will never work with you. The goal with social media is to get people to like, know, and trust you. And if they're not building a rapport with you because you're posting all these stock images that you've downloaded off Canva, well, they're never going to build a connection with you and thus they're never gonna reach out. You could be consistent for the next 10 years and still never get a client if you're just posting Canva graphics. Also, if you're just posting photos of homes, there's no way people can get to know you. You need to understand 
understand the 80-20 rule and know that 80% of the content needs to have you in it. You need to be the one that is building the brand and people need to get a better understanding of who you are, which is why it's so important to show your lifestyle, show your hobbies and passions and what you're into, because that's going to allow people to connect with you emotionally and that will make them feel like they know you and thus they're going to reach out. Number 10 is ignoring the data. What gets measured gets managed. Once you start looking at the data, which can be found on any social media platform, this allows you to look at the engagement. You can start to look and see which posts or videos are performing the best, which are performing the worst, and you can double down on the ones that are working and dial back on the ones that are not. But all too often, people are throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks, and then they're just posting based on assumption, not based on data. So they're posting all this content that really doesn't engage with people when they could have been doubling down on content that is proven to engage with people based on their analytics. So it's really important on a monthly basis at least to go through your insights on Instagram, go through the data and the analytics on YouTube and TikTok or any other social platform and look at what's working, what's not, and what can you do to audit that and make tweaks every single month so that month over month, you're always improving. Number 11 finally is going to be having an all or nothing mentality and not understanding a floor and a ceiling. Let me explain this really important concept. So where a lot of agents go wrong is they say, well, I'm going to be posting three times a week on short form and two YouTube videos a week, which is great. That's the blueprint that you should be following. And what happens is they take an all or nothing mentality where they either go all in or they do nothing and they break momentum. So they'll have a couple of weeks where they do their three short form and their two long form. And then one week, things hit the fan, clients are going crazy, all kinds of deals falling apart and they get overwhelmed and then they don't record anything. And what happens is it breaks momentum and then they go a couple of weeks without posting anything at all, breaking the momentum. They just spend weeks building. What you need to do is have a floor and a ceiling. And a ceiling is what you're going to do on a weekly basis if everything is perfect or ideal. And that's what you want to strive for. And what happens with most people is if you don't operate at the ceiling, you just throw everything out the window and you do nothing at all. Whereas you could say, okay, you know, I, this week is absolutely crazy. I can't do my three short form and my two long form. If you have a floor of doing one long form and one short form, at least you keep the momentum going. So let me give you an example of driving a car down the highway. If you're driving a car down the highway at hundred kilometers an hour, and what happens sometimes is people, again, things get crazy in business and they pump the brakes and they go back down to like 20. 20 kilometers an hour. Well, the time and energy it's gonna take for you to get that car back up to 100 kilometers an hour is astronomical compared to what it would take if you just dip down to 90 or 80 and then get back to 100. So what you want to do is by identifying that floor, which is come hell or high water, the bare minimum you're going to commit to, what that's gonna do is make sure that when things go sideways, which they will, you're not gonna break momentum and burn all of the hard work that you've been putting in to your social media content. What I'm going to do in this video is break down the six reasons why I see so many agents failing to get clients on social media. And the best news is, is it's usually not that you're not doing the right things, but these six things are going to give you context as to what you can do differently and how you can improve over time in order to start getting massive amounts of clients from your social media, just like I've done in the past and how I've helped many agents do every single year. What's up guys? My name is Mike Sherrod. I train thousands of agents every year to scale their business the modern way with social media. And this is a, an important topic that's very near and dear to my heart because because I have a lot of people that reach out to me that watch my videos on all the different tutorials about how to leverage social media. They get excited about it or they see me speak at an event and then they start and they stop and they're not getting the results they're expecting and they quit, they give up and they're not getting any clients from it. Um, or they continue to do it and still don't get any clients from it, which is even worse. So what I want to do is really explain to you why people are struggling with it so that I can give you the opposite end, which is what you need to do to not struggle with it. Number one is delayed versus instant gratification. The worst question and somebody that basically I almost know they're going to fail with social media is if they ever ask how long until you think I'm going to get a client? Well, if that's your mentality, that's instant gratification, because basically what that's saying is, I'm going to do this until that point, And if I don't get a client, I'm going to give up. I'm going to go to something else, which is usually what they do, which is the worst thing you can do. If you look at anybody that has succeeded in anything, they do the activity consistently and relentlessly 
over an extended period of time. They have moved the time horizon for their barometer of success to the point where if they don't get a client in three months, they don't care because they know that people have proven this to work many times over if they commit to the process, which we'll get into in the next thing. But having delayed gratification is really important because this is a delayed gratification approach. If you want instant gratification, you're gonna have to go do something that's more instantaneous, like door knocking or cold calling, but not many people wanna do that. So you have to shift your perspective. You need to go in and say, I'm going to do this for the rest of my career because this is the modern way of prospecting in, and again, I'm not saying that the traditional way doesn't work is how I built my business in the beginning, but you need to understand that this is important. It's not going away and it's only going to become more relevant and a necessity. So looking at this from a long-term play is one of the most important things that most people struggle with. Number two is commitments to the process. I briefly touched on this a second ago, but when you look at this, you can look at a number of different videos on my YouTube channel that proves a ton of agents that are crushing it on YouTube, getting clients that are crushing it on TikTok, crushing it on Instagram. All of them just did the very simple things consistently. There's a very powerful quote that I live by, which is that if one man or woman can do it, so can another man or woman. So if somebody on my channel, like Suman or any of these other people that have incredible results with their YouTube channels, and they committed to the process for over a year, and they can do it, well, what's the difference between them and you? The only difference is consistency in action, but in terms of skill sets, you can go do this too, right? But a lot of people are not committed to the process and they think that it's a problem with them. And it's not a problem with them in terms of their skill sets, it's a problem with them in terms of their mindset. Number three is thinking unbiasedly. And this is gonna be a bit of a litmus test that you can do. And I get people to do this on their posts, on their videos and on their ads. So let's do that post video ad in that sequence. So when we look at posts, one of the things that I do is whenever people are posting on Instagram or whatever, TikTok, and they post something, I get them, if they're not getting any clients in their social media, I get them to look at that post and say, if I didn't know who you were, if you didn't know who you were, would you go so far as to like that post? Would you even go so far as to comment on that post? And would you actually go to your own profile and follow you or subscribe to you? And what you'll see is most people will say no. Most people wouldn't even engage with their own content, but they're expecting other people to engage with it just because of them. They're thinking biasly, right? So you need to do this litmus test to say, if I didn't know who you were, would you engage with your own content? Same thing goes with videos. Watch, I rewatch 100% of my own videos before I put it up on YouTube. And what I do is I look at where does my attention drift off? Where could I have done better? What could I have done differently? Would I clicked on that thumbnail versus the other thumbnails that are out there for the same video topic? And if the answer is no, I revise it, I redo it, I reshoot it. And I'm constantly looking at improving because if you wouldn't watch your own video start to finish, how can you get somebody else to watch your own video start to finish? And that's a question that you need to be honest with yourself with because again, people are going to act in the same way that you would act. And if you remove yourself from the biased perspective, then you're gonna get some really eye-opening information. Same with advertising, the third part, which is if you were to run an ad, most people run these stupid ads with their face shot on it or free home evaluation or something like that. Ask yourself, if you were a member of the general public and you were not a realtor, would you click on that ad? And most people wouldn't click on their own ad. So why are you getting all worked up and you know disappointed and upset and pissed when nobody else is clicking on it when you wouldn't click on it? It makes no sense. So you need to think unbiasedly and start to do these quality control tests to make sure that you're acting in the way in accordance with what the general public will act in. Number four, time management. A lot of people think that social media needs to take a ton of time and they get overwhelmed so that they don't do it and they're not consistent. It really doesn't. It comes down to time management. I do like I'm doing right now. It's a Saturday morning. I record all of my videos for the month, one Saturday in the morning, every month. My whole month's worth of content is done in one session between 8.30 and 1 p.m. every single time. And for my photos and for my short form content, for my short form content, I do one post a day, 30 posts a month, usually on Instagram and TikTok. And I go out once a month and in 60 minutes and one hour, we do 30 short form videos. I write out all the bullet points, one take, crank it out, done. Might take you two hours, might take you three hours, who cares? But either which way, get it done in one session. Now I've got all my content for the month. I'm done. I post it, right? It's all about time management. And most people struggle with that. Number five, investment versus an expense. A lot of people look at getting somebody to design your thumbnail for $10 on Fiverr versus you spending an hour to do it on Canva is an expense. A lot of people think getting somebody to edit your video is an expense. Well, let me look at the thumbnail, for example. 
or again, photographer, whatever your situation is. But a thumbnail for this example, I'm gonna phrase it from two different perspectives. Number one, time, number two is results. So when we look at time, if you say you wanna make six figures per year in real estate, but you see that it's $10 for a thumbnail and you're taking an hour to design that thumbnail, you're essentially valuing yourself at $10 an hour, which is not six figures a year. So that's problem number one. Uh, and number two is quality results. So if you could pay somebody $10 to design a thumbnail that's gonna get 200, 300, 500% more clicks because it's actually professionally designed and it doesn't look like shit. Well, that's 200 or two to five times more views, which means that it's going to be a bigger return on your time invested for you creating the video because it's getting more views in front of more people, potentially more leads and more clients. That is an investment into your business. It is not an expense. And a lot of people, which goes into the last thing we're gonna talk about, really struggle with investing money into their business because they just view it as money going out, not future money coming back in. Number six, one of the biggest problems, and probably the biggest problem, is most people will not pursue something that does not have a guaranteed outcome. This is why if you look at the Michael Jordans, the LeBron James, the Kobe Bryants, anyone that has ever achieved excellence in a sport, Tom Brady's, is they have basically pursued perfection during their career. Well, nothing's perfect and they know that. But there's an interview with Kobe Bryant and this is what he says is, I pursue perfection because I know my competition will not pursue something that doesn't have a guaranteed outcome. So even if I fall short of perfection, I will still land much higher than my competition because they wouldn't even try and they wouldn't even attempt. Well, that happens with social media for real estate. So, so many people are saying, I'm only going to do it if I can get a client within this amount of time. I'm only going to spend this amount on ads. If I don't get a client, I'm not gonna do it again. I'm only gonna do it for this long and if it doesn't work, I'm going to a different platform. Well, again, if you commit to the process and you embrace delayed gratification, it's gonna work out, but you have to stop setting yourself up from failure mentally from day one by putting these fictitious timelines and expectations that you have no data and logic to back it up with. You're just pulling it out of thin air. You heard some you know, unicorn story and think that that's just the status quo. You have to go in with the mentality that you're going to do this for the rest of your career. You know the importance of it. You're going to commit to improving over time by rewatching your content and auditing it. And you're going to commit to the process to the point where this eventually will work out. You've also been consistent on Instagram. And I think this is always a, a bit of a dynamic that some people struggle with, which is being consistent with more than one thing. A lot of people find that it's like, okay, I can, you know, be marginally consistent with this one, but how do I do two? Like, how do I balance right. this? So what does that look like when you start integrating a second platform? Definitely at first, it was not easy at all. If I yeah. was focusing on one, my other was suffering. So when I did my 30 day real challenge for myself in December, I think I maybe posted twice in the month because I was so focused on it. And it got to a point where you have to tell yourself, what can I absolutely commit to on this one? And what do I, can I absolutely commit to on the other and actually do it? So what I usually do on Instagram is I usually, I film my YouTube videos first and my snippets from Instagram lead back to my YouTube. For those that you know, don't want that longer form, I'll shorten it to about a minute. So if I'm talking about the three best coffee places in Connecticut, I will maybe just give them the title on Instagram and then I will actually go in depth here. So that's, I usually just bounce off con like content between the two, shorter on Instagram, longer on YouTube. And I've gotten good success from that as well because people are still curious enough to be like, well, I want more and they go back to my YouTube anyways. But I definitely think managing two, I pu would probably do about two to three re reels on Instagram and maybe one post that has just multiple slides on it. But, and then I usually do at least a minimum of one YouTube video a week. So that always helps out. And sometimes I'll even post reels before my YouTube video to like get the build up. Yeah. And then I'll post. So it, it just depends, but that's definitely what I can commit to at least three times a week on Instagram and at least once to twice on YouTube. Cause I know myself yeah. and now that spring market is here, which is a crazy market here in Connecticut. I know like, Hey, that was a good choice. I, I over committing to something it either gets sloppier or you don't do it. Just commit to something and stay at that baseline that you have for yourself. Yeah, it's such a good piece of advice because I see so many people that will watch a video like this or with anybody else that we've done on the channel and they're like, okay, I'm fired up. I'm gonna do TikTok or Instagram or right. YouTube. And, and they're like, I'm gonna do, like I get people messaging me saying, Mike, I'm gonna post daily. And I'm like, well, listen, 
you know, that's great until right. you run out of ideas in two weeks and you burn right. out. And, and I think operating at that baseline is such a key principle because so many people overcommit and then what happens is they disappoint themselves and then they fall victim to you know that that weight and pressure on them for saying they committed to it and now they're not doing it and then they don't do it at all and it's right. it's so important i've always advised people to find a cadence and a frequency you can commit to for at least six months and it's better to scale up than to scale yeah. back and exactly. so I love that you're doing that. Now, before we get into a couple overarching principles that I think have really defined what you've been able to do here, let's just talk about your process for Instagram. So, you know, what what are you editing it on? What are you shooting it on? You know, any sort of best practices when it comes to reels and video on Instagram? Yeah, so for Instagram, I film it on my phone. Everything is my phone. And I film it on the same day, every Friday, whatever the YouTube video is. I'll film probably about 10 at a time because that's about three week, weeks worth of content. And I edit it on InShot because it's very user-friendly. And then sometimes I'll put the captions, I'll use the captions app to just put it on there. But other than that, same thing. I block off this, I'm on those two hours on Monday, I am scheduling for YouTube and Instagram. And then on that Friday, I'm filming for both as well. Awesome. Well, that's, that's super cool. And, and I think there's, you know, kind of three things that I'd really love to dive into to really like pull this full circle, which is, you know, some of the principles that I see that have allowed you to succeed. And, and the first one that is just relevant because we just got finished talking with it is your discipline with your calendar. And I think I'd love for you to kind of unpack this because I've always lived by the principle that if it's not in your calendar, it doesn't exist. And, you know, so many people are just, you know, treating content as a like casual, when I get to it, when I have time type thing. Right. And we never get time because things right. get in the way, life is crazy. Literally. And so maybe maybe dive into your, your weekly schedule or the and the importance of committing to what you actually put in your calendar. Thousand percent. Like I wasn't until really this year, this coming January, that I actually was serious about my calendar. And even it's like a continuous learning thing that my calendar is honestly everything. If it's not on my calendar, it does not get done. Even today, my schedule changed about three different times because you just never know. But when you have those non-negotiables about filming, because I know it needs to get done, and I know I already set the expectation. For not only myself but my followers they expect me to post because i've been consistent what happens when that falls off they're like oh what happened no nothing happened but that's why i do it it's because yeah. they people are relying on me i rely on myself so my calendar yeah i mean it's every day every monday it has to get done i have to have that pdf of everything that i'm going to be talking about the research i found and even if you don't have ideas this chat gbt yeah. i'm i use it Honestly, it's, it, it saves up time. It's free. Use your resources. Chat GPT is really great. And even if you can't say something right or find the words, you can still use that. And once again, for the homes, I just go out, I ask the agent, hey, can I film your, your home and help you with marketing? It's usually always a yes. And I make sure that I schedule it on Friday, along with, I, I film first Friday. And then I go out and film the houses. So it's about two and a half hours of filming, depending on the areas I'm going to. But once again, your schedule is your lifeline in this industry. If you are not organized and you do not schedule, it won't, it won't work. I don't know anybody who can just remember everything they do every day. I know I can't, I have a yeah. one path mind. Like right here, right now I'm in the meeting, who knows what I'm doing afterwards. My schedule will tell me though. But yeah, yeah so you have to schedule it out and it has to be important to you where it's a non-negotiable it obviously if it's negotiable it's not that important obviously it's a non-negotiable to me because you guys in this channel and everything i've built is important to me so once again if it's not in your schedule or you don't have some type of like written physical schedule or you're a phone you have to do it you have to do it and honestly you have to make it clear to everybody else just mm -hmm. because your phone is ringing or you get a text does not mean you have to look at it or answer it Yes, this is the business and we are on our phones most of the time, but sometimes those people do have to wait because once again, this is a non-negotiable. Yeah. And I think there's, there's a lot of power to that because, you know, I keep my phone on do not disturb. There's no notifications ever on it, on any social platform. And, and, you know, it, 
I understand that when you're in production, you still need to be able to access your phone. But yeah. I think there's there's a balance here, which is when you're recording, when you're prospecting, when you're doing, you know, the activities that are going to build your business, you need to keep it on do not disturb. And, you know, a lot of people will say, well, Mike, what happens if I miss out on a lead or miss out on a call? And what, what they fail to realize is people respect those that are busy and scarcity creates value. So when they know right. that, hey, you're busy and you'll get back to them and, and that's the importance of what most people don't do, which is creating a strategic voicemail, that's something that, again, will help them understand that you're valuable, you're busy, you're doing work, you're growing, right. and that you're not just freely disposing of your time. Now, the second principle, which I think is really important that that you've done incredible with, which it, it kind of boils down to learning and being coached and never staying stagnant. And I think it's incredible where you were at this past brokerage, not getting what you were looking for, but you had the dil the, the diligence and the discipline to reach out and, and be able to be involved in James's coaching. And then, you know, you were able to come over here and you dove into the academy and you've always been a student. And I think a lot of people, you know, kind of just say, hey, I'm gonna do what's comfortable and whatever's provided to me, that's what I'm gonna work with. And you're always seeking more. So do yeah. you explain to to a lot of the newer agents that, you know, aren't where they wanna be, that that there's a lot of weight behind working with people that maybe are where you want to be? Thousand percent. When you come into this industry, you have to be a baby and get that, get the milk. Just get, like suck it in from everybody else. You have to be able to be coachable. You have to be able to learn and sit back and let other people at least help you get to your niche, right? Because there's so many different ways that you can get leads and prospects. Yes, and I've tried it. I haven't done cold call, I know myself, but I have done maybe door knocking and stuff like that. You have to try it out and you have to be able to learn and try things outside of the box. When I first got into real estate, I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna move in silence. No one's gonna know, but honestly, I quickly learned that I have to put myself out there in order for people to find me. So that mindset switched very quickly because yeah. I'm just like, nope, I can't be under a rock. I actually have to be on top of it. So yeah, when you are in this industry, you have to be able to let the OGs and not even, they don't even have to be older, but we are looking at successful people. The Wolfpack is yeah. filled with people that found their niche and are good at it. Ask them questions, allow them, allow to be teachable and coachable. And don't be afraid, like, I am never afraid to ask anybody a question. A stupid question is, there's no such thing. Because if you don't know something, you have to ask. Like, yeah, you can go Google, yada, yada, yada. The easiest way is to humble yourself and ask the person. That That's always been easiest for me. When I first got under contract and I went to my transaction coordinator being like, I literally do not know this, they sat down with me and showed me. And I was humble enough to be like, hey, I have this person, but I don't know what to do. And... We have people like that all over, not only the Wolfpack, but the company that is always, always willing to reach out. When I went to EXPCon, I literally had people being like, hey, save my number if you need anything from Phoenix, from Hawaii, from wherever. I literally met them 10 seconds ago, but they are yeah. always willing to help. And that's, you have to be able to utilize it. They give us so much on how to be successful. It's literally up to us to just take it and implement it. Yeah, you, you said a, a principle that's so important and near and dear to my heart, which is, you know, really coming down to dropping your ego, removing emotion and being able to say, hey, you know, it's okay to ask questions. It's an, it's important to learn from other people. And I think yes. you touched on something that that maybe people missed, which is the, the age thing, where a lot of people make the assumption that, you know, if they're older, they've got the best advice. But what you'll see is number one, a lot of the older agents also just got into the industry. Number two, yeah. a lot of the older agents that have been in the industry for 20 years have repeated their first year for 20 years, which is why right. they're still not doing massive volume. And, you know, with me being 30, I still learn a lot from no on TikTok and he's 22. But then right. simultaneously, I'm teaching a lot of people at 30 who are 50, 60 years old about video, but I learned from them. And I think it's important to be able to, again, you said it perfectly, to be able to humble yourself and just understand that, you know, even though we've got strengths, we also have weaknesses. And if we find people that have the skill set in that area, then we should be willing and open and you know really excited to receive that information to make us more well-rounded literally yeah i mean like i said before i mean you just literally have to just sit down and be able to have that milk as a baby because you yeah. are a babe even if you were maybe shadowing someone before you got your license you still weren't active so yeah. thousand percent i agree
No, that's perfect. And and I think kind of, you know, the last key principle um, before we pull it full circle is, you know, you, you've done really well with discipline but but taking action in i think committing to what you say you're going to do and i think this kind of boils down to maybe your best recommendations for agents that either a just got started in the industry or b got started in the last couple of years and, and haven't built momentum 